Hi, and welcome to another very interesting class, Neuro Linguistic Programming. My name is George Asian, and I'm your instructor. The goal is to show you what to do to become a fantastic person, to become a peak performer, to become excellent at your, in your workplace, to become an effective parent, a great communicator, a great leader. NLP has several life applications. If you have a phobia that you want to deal with, using NLP techniques, you can deal with your phobia. If you have, um, if you have any fear you want to knock off, NLP can help you knock off fear. NLP can make you feel better. Um, NLP uses visualization techniques, language patterns, um, physiological restructuring, behavioral change. NLP uses technologies and sometimes these technologies are quite simple. These ideas are quite simple and um, some of us already use them but NLP helps places labels on them and enables you to be more conscious of them so that you can use them more effectively. Alright, so today we are going to discuss a very important part of NLP and that important part of NLP is called Milton Model. Milton Model. So you want to write that in your notes. I already written it as a topic. So Milton Model is what we'll be discussing about today. Now, we might not finish talking about it, but we will just begin to do the introductory part and help you understand. Now let's go back to the history of NLP or the history of neuro linguistic programming. Neuro linguistic programming was started by two gentlemen, John Grinder and Richard Bandler. This man came up with this body of knowledge. And how did they come up with this body of knowledge? They began to put this thing together by studying certain people, certain men. The first person they studied was Erickson Milton. Erickson Milton was a, was a hypnotherapist, and I hear a medical doctor. He was he suffered from polio but the very outstanding thing about him and his therapy um, when he met with people with um, patients who came for counseling who came for one medical issue or the other he had this uncanny way of putting them into trance and getting them to you know to literally follow his line of thought he was able to put them at ease save them from stress break their patterns reframe them so easily and he had outstanding results he had so much outstanding results that he became quite popular in his field in hypnotherapy um, what we call today what has evolved to what we call life coaching people who are going through depression having psychological issues behavioral issues would meet him and he would deal with them with his ideas he had a way of he had a language pattern now the founders of NLP didn't only study Erickson Milton, they also studied two other very prominent figures. They, they studied a lady called Virginia Satire. Virginia Satire was a family therapist. She had this uncanny way to reach out to people, you know, who would, families, male, female, husband, wives, couples, come to her and she helped them to, to either walk away from that relationship and still, have the, and still keep their peace of mind or cement the relationship stronger. She had this very fantastic way of getting results. And then the last person they also studied was um, Freeze Pills. Freeze Pills was the founder of uh, a, a, a psychological body called Gilstart. Now, so the founders of NLP studied three people basically. They decoded their ideas. Um, they studied what made them so outstanding. And the first thing they studied was that they studied, I told you they studied Erickson Milton, they studied Virginia Satire, and the study of um, free skills. Now, how does this relate to what we're talking about today? It's important because the strategy and the techniques that Erickson Milton used to get the kind of results and the outcome he was, was getting is not the same technique and ideas that, um, that um, Virginia Satire or free skills were using. Now, during the study, they realized that Virginia Satire and free skills the lady and the man were more precise. They had, they had a questioning technique that demanded precise information. They wanted information. So when they had conversations with their patients or people who came for counseling or who came for therapy, 
they were looking out for precise information. They wanted details, they wanted facts, they wanted figures, they wanted, um, they wanted to go through the fluff. And, and what neuro, the neuro linguistic expert, that is um, um, Richard Bandler, Richard Bandler and John Grisham came up with was that the two of them, Virginia Sotera and Free Spills, had what they finally called the precision model. We'll talk about that, or what has evolved to become the meta model. So those two guys had a concept. Whenever they asked a question, they wanted to get into detail because they felt that people live in some kind of trance. People live in some kind of trance. People um, don't really know what they want. All right, you need to ask them, get them to critically um, think about what they want before they can give you exactly what they want. And then the other guy, Eric C. Milton, who I told you was crippled and was a hypnotherapist, used the reverse. He or he used the reverse, and that was basically what they called what these founders of NLP called the Milton model. The Milton model would not necessarily ask you questions. He was not really interested in specifics. He was interested in abstracts. He was interested in ambiguity. He wanted you to find the answers yourself. And he wanted to, he would usually put you into trance or hypnotize you in quotes, through language, and then suggest words to you. And that's what we're going to be studying today. We're not studying, we're going to look at the meta model or the precision model later but today we're going to look at first and foremost the multi-model for you to understand the meta model or the precision model you first need to understand the multi-model the meta model is like the reverse or the opposite of the multi-model if you want to come out of trance or hypnosis then you need to understand the meta model if you take you take people into trance using the multi-model and then you can take them out of trance um, in using the meta model. You've had me use the word trance because the truth is that every day you go through several trances. Several. Some of these trances can be short, some of them can be long. Some of these trances can be as short as a second, two seconds, three seconds. Some can be as long as a minute, 30 minutes, one hour. When it's one hour, it is not very, <laughs> it's not beyond normal. So you can get into trance when you hear certain words, when you see certain pictures, or when you remember certain thoughts. You can get into trance when you're in meditation. So, human beings go into what we call daydream. We go into several trances on a regular basis. And we are moving, and we make most of our decisions are based on our inner visualizations, what's going on in our minds. So what, what Milton, Eric C. Milton does, basically, is that he puts people here who get into trance. When you worship God, when you worship in church and you listen to music, music can also put in trance, you go into trance, you're eating good food, you can go into trance, you are um, listening to good music. I mean, there are several ways to go into uh, this frequency. So, Milton model is a very, is actually a biolo is a, is a, is a linguistic technique. And majorly, we use Milton model because you see, Milton, Eric C. Milton used language. He did not tell you, I want to put you in a trance. He didn't say, sit down, do this, do that. He didn't, do, he didn't go that route. What he would do rather is he would just have conversation with you. So embedded in his conversation were trance-inducing words and phrases and metaphors and symbols. Embedded in his facial, what, what he did, his conversation was such that you could go into trance and he could get you to see things the way he wanted you to see. So let's go into... Um, very specific things. I want to write this down. Language is a translation of mental states into words. Language is a translation of mental states into words, or a translation of internal representations into words, a translation of thoughts into words. Now, in this translation, when we translate things that we have in our mind into words, here's what happens. We do a few things. We do three things, basically. In the process of translating word, thoughts, what we have in our mind, into words, we do a few things. First of all, we delete. And if you've been following me carefully, I've taught you deletion. Deletion means that we exclude some important parts. So it's not everything that we see, you know, at the back of our minds. It's not everything that we see in our minds or, you know, that we say. 
and there are many factors that, that, that determine that. So we would exclude some information, we delete certain information from those uh, mental states or those pictures we have in our minds. Number two, we distort. So in the course of saying things, we distort things, and, uh, and that's basically because of assumptions, structural inaccuracy, uh, based on our own perception of stuff, so we distort stuff. So we don't totally translate the information we have in our minds or the information that we receive, we just find a way to distort it. And then the next thing that we do is that we generalize. So we do three things whenever we speak. We also do three things when we receive information. This same thing applies to when we speak and when we receive information. If you have followed, there was something called NLP communication model. I'm going to teach it exclusively one of these days where I'll teach you the NLP communication model, how communication applies. When you receive information, I also upload the diagram so that you can see it. When you receive information, what filters go through, mental filters you go through before you make any um, interpretation or you behave or you receive, you have the states that you're in. So, but now we're talking about communication and we're saying that before you say anything, mental, your, your, your language is a, is, a, is a translation of your mental states. And before you say anything, you delete certain information so that for whatever reason, you also distort certain information and then you also generalize. Now, melting model is a collection of artful art, artful vague language patterns elicited from the work of Ericsson. Milty model is a collection of artful vague language. So what Ericsson Milton did most of the time was use ambiguity. He used vagueness to still pass across information to us. And, and this is so vital and important that you understand. Now let me make it more understandable. When do you use vague language? Whenever you tell stories, whenever you tell stories, you're using vague language. You are putting people into trouble because storytelling is one of the fastest ways to get people to go, to, to go into trance. Storytelling. Especially when you, when you are a good storyteller, when you understand the elements of good storytelling, when you know how to use characters, dialogue, when you know how to use drama, when you understand the dynamics of good storytelling, you know, people go into trance. When you're even gisting with your friends, people slip into trance. And the beautiful thing about this is that if you know what to do, and if you know how to use words, you can put words, you can infuse words into your conversation that puts people into trance. You can put words that have essence, that have meaning, that have um, strategies, that have hope, that have principles, that have ideas. You can do that with your children. I tell parents to tell your children a lot of stories. I tell employees, employers to tell their employees, tell your employees a lot of stories. The people who are leaders must learn how to tell stories because using Milton model is painting pictures. People want to be in trance and it, tell me it matters what kind of trance they are in. So as a leader and as a counselor, your job is to find a way to put them into trance by using good stories, by using artful and vague language, ambiguous language. So example, storytelling, then how to tell a good story, using metaphors. In your being a lot more descriptive, um, using idiomatic expressions, you know, being very vague in your presentation, you know, a lot of politicians know how to use this. They tell you food for all, they tell you house for all, they tell you there will be this, there will be that. Meanwhile, they don't give you specifics, and the idea basically is to make you dream. Whenever we use multi model, we're trying to get you to dream. So, um, some the neuro linguistic experts have put together a lot of ideas, a lot of words that when you use them, they literally put people into trance. They literally put people into trance. Now, I'm going to begin to go into some more technical parts. So I've told you storytelling is another fantastic way. Using proverbs and quotes is a very great way to have conversations with people. People may even forget the details, but they won't forget the stories. And if you embed the, the points in the stories, you'll you make a fantastic, great um, speaker and communicator Jesus used stories in true parables. Uh, as even ancient, excuse me, philosophers also used stories. 
to become more story driven even in your presentation even when you're reading out statistics you want to become more story driven in your pursuit so let's talk about a few i'm going to just look at two things so i don't go technical on you and then we'll look at those two things today we'll pause and then we'll have another class again where we'll go a little deeper now let's start with what you call mind read so one example of one example of multi model is called the mind read what does it mean it means claiming to know someone's internal state you don't like me when a person tells you, you don't like me uh, there is a meta there's a meta model question that that interrupts it that 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 access that challenges that 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 assertion you don't like me you meet a person you don't like me and then the meta version will be why don't you like me but you don't like me is vague and it is assuming that you know my mind already it's assuming that you will have access to my heart all right so if you're going to really say that a lot more I, I demand for specificity. I demand for you to be more specific. I want to know why do you say you don't like me? And that's go switching to meta model. So storytelling and ambiguity and vagueness is multi model. Asking for specifics and details, you know, and questions is usually um, is meta model. When we when we when you see someone who wants to get something from you, get money from you, he starts telling a lot of stories. The moment he tells a lot of stories, you know that he's trying to put you in the trance so he can convince you to, to take the required action. So one of the ways to counter him is to ask a question. A question, more specific questions, usually will poke the holes into multimodal. So, um, a metamodal answer will be, how do you know I don't like you? That's a metamodal answer. But you know, you're claiming to know my internal state. How do you know my is a mind read? You've got to be careful about mind. So write that down in your note. Mind reading is one form of multimodal. People just mind read. <laughs> and it's a form of multimodal. There's a second form of multimodal called lost performative. Lost, lost performative. I'm gonna spell it for you. L-O-S-T. P E R F O R M A T I V, lost performative. Now, this is what we call value judgment, where the person doing the judging is left out. I'll give you an example. It's bad to be inconsistent. It's bad to be inconsistent. Who are we talking about? Now, the person we're talking about who is not consistent is not mentioned there. You're looking at somebody and you're having a conversation with the person. All right? Instead of directly telling the person, it's bad to become you are, you know um, don't be don't be that, that, that going direct to the person you're telling me it's bad to be inconsistent that statement is what we call lost performative you didn't mention the name of the person you know so it's bad so so we uh, you know it's a statement it doesn't mention whether it is you and who even who says that so the, the meta model reverse the meta model reverse you know of that multi model is who says it's bad or according to whom or how do you know it is bad so you can you can challenge the authority of the who is saying that by saying who says it is bad or you can say according to whom or you can if, if you feel the person is talking to you say how do you know it is bad so by saying it's bad to be inconsistent but it's bad not to eat or it's bad not to go or to go here if you are taking out the person who is performing you know is a value judgment and that is a melting model and we don't teach we don't encourage it we don't we don't but you can use it strategically to get certain results you can as a suggestion to somebody to get certain results all right so that is about that now i think i probably gave you one more and then we'll continue this multi model um, concept tomorrow or whenever we meet again the third way is complex equivalence or equivalence. Let me spell it for you. C O M P L E X E Q U I V A L E N C E. You know, this is where two experiences are interpreted as being synonymous. Synonymous. 
this is where two experiences are being interpreted as being synonymous. So let's let's look at a typical example of this. She's always shouting at me. She doesn't like me. My wife is always shouting at me. She doesn't like me. So you're ex you're sharing two experiences, and you're assuming that they are together. They are related. You're assuming that they are synonymous. No, that's a multi-model. That's what people do a whole lot. That's how we distort, especially that's how we distort things. Because you know, you're saying she always she's always shouting on me, she's always always shouting on me, she doesn't like me. They've jumped to that conclusion already. They don't relate. They don't relate. She always shouts on me, she doesn't like me. Or sometimes you can say because she doesn't like me. They don't always relate. So the meta model, the meta model is the reverse of the multi model we're going to look at meta model exclusively extensively subsequently you say you, know, you you can if if you if you tell me if i'm in a conversation with you and you say my wife doesn't like me because I, my, my wife doesn't my wife do, my wife shouts on me because she doesn't like me or my wife shouts on me she doesn't like me i will tell you actually the question how does shouting mean that she doesn't like you that's the question I used to poke you, to ask for more specificity or more specifics. That's the question I ask you. That's a meta model. Okay, and I, or I could ask you again: Have you ever shouted at someone you didn't like? You know, so those questions will challenge the person to start thinking and and get the person to start getting a lot more clarity. So let's pause there for today in our thoughts. But this is what we're trying to achieve in this conversation. That there is a challenge between clarity and ambiguity. And we teach that wholly in neurolinguistic programming. The founder of, of NLP realized that this world is about clarity and ambiguity. Both of them have their place. So don't think because I mentioned, I mentioned three um, multi models, they are all negative. They can be used in life coaching. All right, and sometimes it's good to know these expressions, these distortions, so that when you're having conversation with people, you know how to give them the meta version of it. All right, it's good to know the meeting model, and you can also use it so when you are up the ladder, the corporate ladder, you're up as a leader, you want to be a lot more ambiguous, you want to paint big pictures, you want to tell good stories, you want to paint and be more descriptive because that's what gives inspiration. People want to see things, people want to view things. But as you go, when you want to get to solve problems, or you are a manager, and you want to start getting actual results, then you want to be more specific, be more detailed about things like this. So clarity and vagueness can be used to gain power. Um, the idea of vagueness and ambiguity and hypnosis puts us into trance, and that's what that was a strategy that Erickson Milton used a lot and I told you earlier the founders studied that and noticed it so well and in fact deduced, decoded a few things that they share with us on how we can use language pattern. When we go deeper into multimodal, I'll tell you some of those language patterns, those language those words we can use, those phrases we can use and how we can use them to get results. And then at the other end, all right, the two other fellows, um, that lady called Virginia Satire, and then uh, and, uh, and, and uh, fields free pills both of them used the reverse strategy they always were more into more specifics in order to get solutions for the problem and these two patterns work and they can even be used together so what we see again next week we'll go deeper into multi-model and then we will also move into meta model and show you how it's applicable to you okay, so let me give you an assignment you can start using start looking out for um, complex equivalents uh, where people relate to two sentences or two phrases conclude two phrases and assume that they mean the same thing like my wife likes shouting on me she doesn't like me those two statements do they really align you want to verify some more you want to start listening for that you also want to listen to a loss performative where people will say things and leave out the performer. You want to start, you know, and create value, have a value judgment. You want to think about this, listen to this video again to get to understand that. And um, you also want to listen for mind reads. 
when people quickly assume mind reading, when they just assume they know what's going on in your heart. All right, so you want to become more sensitive. Because one of the things we teach in NLP is sensory accuracy. We teach that you must be very sensitive to the environment and to look around. So mind reading, people as people's assumption of you. So take your time to watch this video and learn what you have to learn. Remember that there will be an examination. All the videos are left in this um, platform. And the idea basically is so that you can go over them, watch them. This is not a motivational train. This is teaching. Lectures are like, lectures are actually going on. Take down notes, um, read, you know, go do your research, find out stuff that verify stuff that I've mentioned. And I'm telling you at the end of the day, tell me when you're ready for the exams. We'll give it to you and we hope to see you very soon. God bless you and have a great Saturday.